Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to another Grayscale Gorilla live show. As always, not as always, today we have an extra special guest, Chad Ashley. How are you, buddy? Good. How are you? Oh, just fantastic. Fantastic. Happy Thursday to you. You look nice Same and cozy over there. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we're chilling into fall, you know. Uh, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm getting the heat figured out over here. I got my hoodie on. I'm warming up. Hope you're all staying warm out there in the Midwest. Um, hello, chat. Uh, let us know where you're all from today. Thank you for joining us for another Grayscale Gorilla live show. Um, if this is your first time here, thank you for joining us. We uh, come here to answer questions from our Plus members and uh, YouTube subscribers and uh, today, we're also going to be talking a little bit about some of the news happening around the 3D world. A lot has happened in the last few weeks, um, including some new render updates. We have a new Cinema 4D update we're going to uh, talk about, and also a little bit of news about the new M1 Max that I have on order, Chad. I got to tell you, I got one. Did I, oh, did I not tell you that? Can, put, just change the, the quantity just to get two. two? send well, one over here we'll see i want to test we'll see how this thing rolls with the the gpu and then uh we'll see if we're getting two um stick around i'll let you know which one i grabbed and um the, and uh, that's a little teaser there for you out there in the youtube world thank you so much for joining us uh of course we're also answering your questions so we hop on these um uh live shows to chat a little bit about the industry uh sometimes we talk about some of the things that help you create better looking renders. We dive deep uh, into um, some Cinema 4D tips and tricks sometimes. We're all over the place. Today, my friends, we got some news. And of course, we're taking your questions. Get them ready. But for right now, I want to know where everybody's from. We love seeing this. I'm going to throw up the chat here. And uh, let us know what part of the country or world or state or wherever you're from. Throw it up there. We got Trailhead uh, from Boston. We got, uh, hey, Paul's already got his M1 Max. I hope to get mine soon. Paul, what do you think so far? London's here. Netherlands is here. Hey, what is up, Fred? Out in LA, Fried Pixels. Good to see you, bud. Um, we also got Sweden, Chicago. More Sweden, Chile. London, Spain, Colorado. Chad's out in Chicago. I'm out in Denver. Wait, where am I? I'm in uh, Detroit. Denver. That's where I am. <laughs> I saw Denver. I got. I didn't get a lot of sleep last night, folks. This is gonna be a fun one. I could tell already. He already even know where he is. I don't even know where I woke up. Lower East Side, New York, mm -hmm. Germany, Mozambique. Columbia. Holy moly! Thank you all. I wish so I just much. want to go to all these places. Like, I this know. Is, is it like a great list? <laughs> is it warmer anywhere out there? Not Sweden. I know that much. <laughs> don't go well, to i don't sweden. know maybe it is who knows don't go to sweden in february let me tell you folks beautiful city uh dark very cold uh what's up rachel rachel's here uh helping out with the chat and getting links to you guys as uh we talk about them uh, as always give it up for rachel hi thank rachel. you so much good to see you um and uh we got mike from nyc i'm scrolling latvia Man. people from Look at all that. over Latvia, my band, my old band in Chicago, we we played the Latvian Music Festival. I think that may have been in Michigan, actually. That was a blast. Hmm. That was a blast. Uh, Argentina. All right, folks. Um, yeah, let me know if you got the Mac. We'll be talking a little bit about that. We'll be talking about um, some of the new uh, render news. And um, maybe, Chad, we can maybe start a little bit with the Cinema 4D uh, update. So... Cinema 40 R25 has already had, what do you call it, a hot fix, an update since the uh, official release. And uh, it fixed up um, at least one major thing that we were having a, an issue with. Chad, uh, you want to tell us a little bit about the latest from Cinema 40 R25 update? I mean, I'm a little embarrassed to admit that the only thing I really paid attention to was the fix that I wanted. <laughs> So selfishly, I don't know if anything else was actually fixed. But there's there, so for those of you who uh, heard me talk about this before, or maybe talked about it on Twitter. So I absolutely despise the numeric uh, fields where you drag and it's like a, you know, a slider mixed with a numeric field. Right. Because if you have one of these things, a pen, 
it's like almost impossible to get the number and not drag off and like go wildly off in some direction. And all of a sudden your camera is like on the other side of, of the universe. Um, so they fixed the, uh, the little, like, I don't know if they call it like, um, uh, what do they call that little area around? Well, anyway, they fixed it. So now I don't have to be a microsurgeon to tap down and get a number. So that is a huge quality of life fix as far as I'm concerned. So that was, that was huge for me, but they did not change the check marks in the object manager from gray back to green, which is, uh, a bummer because the gray uh, it feels like it's like your objects are not active like it doesn't it doesn't like work for out. me <laughs> yeah exactly like everything that we're taught you know through through user interfaces and, and ux and whatnot is like things that are i mean that term grayed out like that means that it's not active right we've all heard that term we use that term a lot and to to see your objects with a gray check mark, it just looks like they're not active. And you're like, well, wait, oh, if I click it, it goes red. So it's really not active if I do now that. It's really off. <laughs> yeah. So it's it's that's annoying. Um, yeah, I don't I don't really agree with uh, a lot of the UX uh, user interface. Sorry, um, tweaks uh, that just feel kind of like why you know like I don't get it. I'm like I'm getting used to it. I'm getting used to it. I. I still, I, what, what was I trying to find a, a while back? I mean, there's always that one thing you, you, I use like once a week and then I'm like, where is it again? But I'm, I'm getting there. I'm getting better. Um, Darren, what's up, man? Good to see you. Thanks for coming. Uh, got some, some classic cinema 40 users here in the chat. It's really fun. Uh, Paul, thanks for that. Shift C, <laughs> shift C, Rachel. That is it. That is it. That thing saved my life. Um, Let's see here. We got some other people with the M1. We got people testing out. So here, I'll just say this about the 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 um the new Mac. Once I get it, I'm gonna be testing it out. So I got a lot of questions uh, about it already, especially using it with Octane. And so I'll just I, I know there's benchmarks and all that stuff out there already. I just want to see how dangerous you could get with this thing, um, because on the road, uh. I, I just, I got nothing at, at this point. I got nothing that is going to do any sort of damage inside of Cinema 4D. And right. to really to really do that at this point, you just need a big old beefy, ugly laptop, PC laptop. Mm -hmm. And I want to see how far this thing goes. Um, of course, it's not going to compete with my, you know, uh, Puget machine, <laughs> right. frankly. <laughs> like, I wouldn't expect a little laptop that's powered by a battery to do that. But I think if it comes within something reasonable that you could tweak and play and, you know, brainstorm while you're on the road, I'm, that helps me a lot, you know, as I things think it'll open be better up and I start you... to travel. I hey, think it'll be better than that. I, I So here's my take on it. And, and it's on, we're diving right in, I guess, right? Is that what Let's we're doing right do now? Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's talk All about right, this. So, so uh, I think it's an incredibly exciting um computer i think i'm really excited i want one actually and i think i see a, i've been following it pretty closely and i i see a lot of like people kind of coming at it some people coming at it from the right way and some people coming at it from just slightly the wrong way in my opinion and you can't compare an m1 max macbook pro to a 3090 desktop pc it's just not like that's like that's silly like why what no this is not anything that i would use for a final frame render right i'm not going to sit there and right. render out a 300 frame sequence on a laptop that's just not what i would do now the the thing that i care about is the performance like how is it how does it feel to use it how fast is the ipr how responsive is it how much you know? can I throw at it? Because ultimately, you're just going to be doing some look dev on there and messing around. And when you're ready to finally render it out for real, you're going to send it off to your main system, potentially. Now, that, that's how I'm looking at it, too. Yeah. Like look dev, maybe a little bit of, you know, MoGraph screwing around, like the usual thing, like, oh, wonder how you do that in Cinema 4D. Like the, the question I ask myself at least four times a week. And then I open it up and I'm like, oh, you know, combine this with this MoGraph plus this effector plus this, you know, whatever. And uh, and then a little bit of look dev. I mean, that's that's at least at this point, 
so useful to, to even get to that point on the road and get a sketch down basically a, some sort of 3d digital looking you know it's like a sketch of what i'm trying to make and then you, yeah you save it you put it on dropbox or whatever you open it up when you get home and you you set up your render you know or you right. do your final tweak or well of course like burning this thing up on the road is not the idea but i, I think you're right like look dev um is is such a big part of it. I wanted to ask this, by the way, I want to keep talking about this, but a quick thing in the chat, like what percentage of your, you know, day-to-day -day is look dev versus final compositing, you know, client changes, really like working on the final piece? Um, because I, I think it's such a, it's such a big part of finding out what, what even you're going to, work on it or or sending it at like a like a bid to your or not a bid but like a like a storyboard to your client all that stuff give me a percentage of like what per, what percentage of your work day is is on like look dev storyboards winning the pitch that kind of stuff i would i would love to to hear more about that um yeah chad uh, uh i'll share with you what machine i got too in a minute if anyone in the chat wants to I guess mean, we kind of know. we kind of know <laughs> Yeah, it's so what definitely do you think? a max. I know that it's probably the sixteen right. inch. That's that's where that's where I shrunk it down. I oh, do two, really. Yeah, I do. I, I I've had I've never actually had the full size like seventeen inch whatever they had before Mac. Um, you never had the seventeen, and I don't think I've even ever had a fifteen. I've always had the twelve, the thirteen, the fourteen size, mm. and it's because I like traveling light. I'm, I'm on an airplane. I'm already a tall guy. I don't like stuff under my seats. And whenever I've traveled with a slightly larger laptop, I'm just always like, it's too much. And frankly, you cannot open a 16, 17 inch uh, computer on an airplane and, and have well, it like not hit the front of the seat. And with my, with my long arms, I'm just like T-Rexing it on the airplane. And yeah, so yeah. I'm I'm a I'm a small laptop guy. I'm just gonna say it. I got the 14 inch. Got the, You're gonna go blind. I, no, 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 no. Trying to I, I've tried the I, I have the MacBook uh, Air, and doing 3D on that like cinema. Every menu is like crammed into the <laughs> screen, and I'm like I can't even like tell what the hell I'm doing right now. There was somebody posted. I don't know if it was Stu or somebody else posted the top of the menu bar with the notch taken out and all the cinema 40 menus on a 14 inch oh, yeah. um, new Mac. And I don't even think it fits all the menus. No, you're going to have to run it. You can run apps uh, to ignore, you know, essentially bring the menu down below the notch. Oh, to the notch. just drop it down. Yeah. You can run apps specifically. I think you just like go to options on the, uh, on that app. <laughs> but yeah, I would imagine that I was thinking about that too. I'm like, I it, based on what I, the screenshots that I've been seeing, I think the grayscale gorilla menu would be like right under the notch. <laughs> like, <laughs> I think it's almost like I want to see it because like if somebody out there knows and has is a plus member and and they have the max or something, like I would love to know where we where are we are we at the left of the notch or are we at the right of the notch or are we in the notch? Yeah, we apologize too for adding another menu, yet another right. menu at the top of your thing there with a big, a long name. You're welcome. Yeah, but <laughs> we have welcome, the sweetest, guys. we have the best icons. So like, it's that's pretty true. to that's look true. at. It's pretty. That is at, true. Least. Just undock it and make it all icons, guys. Just put it, just yeah. dock it in your- Put it wherever you dock, want. Dock all your plus stuff in the in the, in the the um, layout. Uh, yeah, we got, all right, we got some sizes. The 16, yeah. I'd, look, I just, once I found out you can get the max, the, this is so confusing to say. The Mac that is called the M1 Max. <laughs> Once I found out that you can put that chip in the 14-inch, I was all in. So I essentially, oh God, now I say maxed again. I essentially maxed out <laughs> a now it's really confusing M1 uh, 14-inch Mac Max M1 Max. I'm gonna say it again. And uh, ex except for the t uh, the 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 hard drive, I just I don't. Because I'm not sitting there rendering on the road, I just don't need like whatever eight terabytes. So I got a two terabyte. Oh yeah, that's fine. Two terabyte hard drive with um with the biggest chip and all the RAM it could take. And yeah. what else did I do? What other options are there? 
the the, the not silver one, whatever they call that. That's it. Wait, that's the the space gray. Space or gray. Space yeah, gray. space gray. Yeah, you. That's, that's the same build I would get, except I would go sixteen because I. Yeah, my I would go like be squinting all the time, but yeah, I'm real. I want to see you when you get this thing. Hit me up once you get everything installed, and yeah. I want to see how responsive uh, Cinema is, how responsive the IPR is in Redshift, how how responsive it is in Octane. I believe that Redshift will run M1 native, and Octane runs in Rosetta, or I think if you run it in metal, maybe it doesn't. If you, if anybody out there knows I the answer, gotta believe. Like, um, they were like Octane and 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 uh, Jewels and everything. They were like in the presentation. I don't think they're running Rosetta. Like they're so, they got. But I think Mac. you can choose which one you want to install, right? Like you can choose like the metal version or I don't know. Somebody out there knows somebody will tell us but yeah i th i know arnold is in rosetta i know redshift should be native m1 right i mean they did they spent all that time yeah i gotta believe you know because octane's been doing so much work and i know redshift's been working on it too uh that that it's got to be native because it's uh well a they were in the keynote so i'm, I'm imagining they got early access and all that and b Octane's been shipping the 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 like free Octane X thing forever because of this because they're like we're ready for M1s, everybody right. go test it. Here's free uh, Octane to go break it, and and they've had it uh, free on the App Store on the Apple App Store. So actually, that's a little tip for everybody. You can actually go download Octane right now for free if you have right. a, a Mac. I forget the restrictions, but go on the App Store if you're sitting on a Mac. Go download Octane X. I don't know what everybody you need. Yeah, what do you got? Everybody's telling us that Redshift is native, um, which is, makes total sense. Now, here's something interesting. Uh, I've been scouring YouTube looking for anybody posting videos of themselves using Cinema on an M1 Max, and uh, I found a couple different ones. I found one I think was from like Korea, and another one was um, I don't know where the guy was from. But I gotta say, like Redshift felt a bit more interactive than Octane did in the videos that I saw. Now that doesn't mean anything. It could be that you know the scene file that that person happened to be running was like really heavy or whatever. So I'm really curious to see when you get yours, like what is the interaction like? We we will do that test. I will. We'll we'll dial in and do that, and maybe even. Maybe even the next stream, if it's ready and it's running and it, it'll work, we could do a little screen share. I'll just bring oh, it yeah. That's here. That's a good idea. And then uh, stay You'll tuned. You'll have to ship it for... here, though, I think, because I have the better internet and stuff. And Oh, shut know. up. <laughs> shut up. <laughs> just, like, send it over here for a few weeks. Uh, so there you go. So there, there's there's the uh, YouTube yelling at me to let you know to subscribe and ring the bell and all that stuff because on the next stream that we do... <laughs> I'll share with you exactly what Chad just said. We'll have it all installed and we'll really test it out and see what Octane does, um, see what Redshift does. The benchmarks are helpful. Like there's already numbers coming in, but I'm way more interested in what you're saying. Like, is it interactive enough to like move a light around? Is it interactive enough to like test materials and get get a get a sense of the 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 feel of your render? I mean, that's that's the that's the thing I tweak the most. That's the why you the IPRs are so important. Not for raw render time, because you could go take a walk and go get a coffee and do renders. But when you're working, you're moving lights, you're adjusting and tweaking and colors and, and materials and where exactly where the camera and how much depth of field, hope that's too much, all that stuff. Every time you do that is a re-render. And the and the quicker you can get to like, ah, not enough, let me tweak it. That is that is it. That is it. All right. Yes. Chat, thank you. We are official. It is it is M1. Octane's M1. Redshift's M1. <laughs> thank you, guys. <laughs> All right, friends. Um, let's see here. We got some questions coming in. Before we jump into some of the uh, new render updates, uh, we I think we have an update from all three uh, renders that we support here at Grayscale Gorilla. We have a new Octane update, a new Arnold update, and a new Redshift update. Is that is that right, Chad? 
I mean, they're not huge. Some of them are just like, you know, point releases. But yeah, there's been some new new releases. Well, let's before we jump into that, let's see if there's any questions about uh, either the well about the the Mac stuff, and then we can move on. Um, we got uh, hey Sarah's here, Rick's here. What's up? Sean's here. Paul's here. Thanks for coming, y'all. Um, as we ramp into more Q and A as well, uh, do me a favor and put a Q, and then put like a little colon or something next to it. And that just helps me see questions. Um, just so I know you're not, you know, asking questions from each other and all that kind of stuff. Uh, dun, 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 dun. Is it fast and M1? We're going to let you know. We're going to let you know. I may have to even do like a YouTube video. If this is, if this is some compelling content, folks, with the M1 with 3D, Ken, is the Mac back? Is the Mac back? Help me brainstorm some YouTube titles, Chad. <laughs> the Mac back for Cinema 4D users? Um, huh? <laughs> is the Mac on its way back? Maybe. Uh, I'm using C4 is it closer than it was two years ago? Yes. <laughs> Better than a trash can? Question mark? What do you think about yes. using eGPU? I've had limited um you were, were I've had limited eGPU um exposure. Uh however, I've heard a lot of mixed i don't know stories from people who use eGPUs with with uh with Macs and um i think it kind of feels to me a little bit like a hackintosh you know you got you got the brain in the in the time and the patience and the the tedious part of the hackintosh thing and you can handle it mm, maybe you can go do the eGPU thing cuz it does feel like that it's very finicky it's very specific that you have to uh specific things you got to do to dial it in chad have you had any experience with these eGPUs? i am i hate introducing uh potential points of failure and i have not heard too many good stories about people using eGPUs. um they seem to be finicky they seem to be a bit of a pain um and I don't believe I would want to risk my time uh, with a with a, a setup like that. I think I would probably entertain a different idea. I might, you know, if you want to, if you, if being on a Mac platform is really where where you want to be, then um, get the MacBook Pro M1 Max. Get a little side PC to offload um, renders to, and yeah, it's going to be expensive. But hey, you know what, like. 3D that whole thing that 3d is expensive <laughs> um but yeah I, I think i would do that before i would get an eGPU. um but you know again it's it's it fully depends on your workflow and like what you're what you're to, what you're able to tolerate in terms of technical problems and how good are you at sniffing out those types of things yeah we have we have a few people in the chat here that say they're using them fine it's working great that i did see you can't use it with an m1 so uh some some heads up but uh yeah, I would be cautious with any of those any of those kind of little fixes like that. I think there's a difference. You're new, you're a student, you're a hobbyist, you're playing around, you're trying to get the biggest bang for the buck, you're trying to get your existing laptop working, add a little juice. I get it. But I think anybody that is, you know, has their their clients, they're freelancing, they're making money doing this stuff. Um I would just always suggest, and, and Chad, I think you're saying the same thing, buy the machines you need, tools at the end of the day that help you speed up your workflow, that help you render faster, that help you uh, do your job are some of the least expensive things you could do because any any time that you get back as an artist, any time that lets you create more and spend more time making the render beautiful is way more valuable than the time the money saved hacking it yeah um it, it I, I think i think that's that's just the the best way to put it um we got a question here that uh, says nick chat have it, it, either of you settled on the new layouts for r25 interface could you maybe share them if you have chad do you have a favorite uh r25 layout yet have you moved it around to your specifications are you happy with it yes i have reached 
happiness in my R25 layout. Um, and I actually tweeted last night um, uh, where you can gra grab mine. I threw them onto a Notion page. I think I saw Rachel post a link in the chat too. Um, but yeah, I've got my layouts in there for Arnold, Octane, and Redshift. Now, if you're a Plus member, it's going to be extra special because I have some of our scripts and things docked into palettes in the layout as well. So Plus members get that extra special, special, uh, get you know, shiny. Get the camera tools all lined up. And the, uh, did you put the plugins lined up there yet? I know you've been playing with it. Yeah, yeah, I got, yes. I got that set up. I got. I, I kind of went deep when when 25 came out and I was kind of like, you know, uh, I was poo pooing the uh, the user interface and stuff, but I did a deep dive on like customization and stuff. And I made all of because I do think they did a really good job with the ability to create uh, custom presets and saving presets and like really optimizing and, and honing in your workflow and making it yours. So I did this deep dive where I made like um, uh, I made like shortcuts for lights with HDR link on them. I made presets for files. I kind of went crazy with it. But um, yeah, if you're interested in that stuff, uh, let me know. Maybe we'll uh, start talking more about that or we could talk about it or show it in a future live stream or something. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Rachel, thank you for linking that. And I also saw, I clicked on that last night when you retweeted it or tweeted it. And I saw that there might be a green checkbox fix mm. too. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Fixing yep. it up, Chad. Thank you, bud. Um, all right, I'm doing the Lord's work. <laughs> green check boxes. Who, Chad? Who knew that that this was really what you were out? There? All these new materials you created. The this uh, this plug uh, this plugin I shouldn't talk about that you're working on. All this stuff. No, no, no. Fixing the green check box. That's going to really be the the Chad legacy. That's, I think that's the one that's going to be number one on the obituary. <laughs> um. We got some questions here. Uh, we'll roll through a few more questions, guys, and then we'll jump into some render news. Uh, Ricardo is asking, does Grayscale Gorilla Signal support X particles for looping emitters with their modifiers? Um, I mean, without knowing more detail about that question, Ricardo, essentially, uh, Signal will work with any animatable parameter inside of Cinema 4D. So if you can keyframe it, if there's a little diamond keyframe thing next to a parameter, you can drag it into a signal or into drop zone to create a signal and you have control over it. So I don't know the exact use case for like looping emitters with their modifiers or exactly what that means. But if again, if there's a setting inside of X particles that you want to control with signal, that is 100% possible. Just drag it into drop zone. It creates a uh, signal for you and your every everything you could do with signal, you could do to that parameter right inside of X particles. And this works with any plugin, anything that is animatable. You use, you know, some geometry creation plugin or something like that. You want to animate it, move it the way, a way that the person um, uh, doesn't do, doesn't natively have, like Signal does it right away. Uh, thank you uh, for the reminder that I need to put these questions on the screen. I appreciate that. So yeah. Ricardo, thank you for that. Um, and if I didn't answer your question quite right, ask me again, let me know. Walter asks a really good question. It's something we talk a lot about here uh, at Grayscale Gorilla when we get these questions from our um, members. So Walter's asking, um, you know, join a new company, ask them for a plus subscription. Thank you, Walter, appreciate that. Uh, we'll probably work on the new Mac, Mac Pro Max and on a PC desktop, just like you talked about, Chad. Holy moly. Hmm. Walter also asks, what happens in this case with only one subscription and two machines? So right now, Grayscale Gorilla Plus it essentially has one seat. You you log in, you join, you get one seat. And if you switch between computers, like Walter does here, you have to basically log out and re-sign in and do that. Um, and we're, we're looking at a way to make this easier. So I don't have anything official to announce right now. But Walter and anyone else out there that's a Plus member, we we do hear you. We get and we love hearing these this feedback, and we always take this stuff very seriously. Uh, we are looking into that right now and trying to make this easier for uh, artists that have more computers and tr want to travel and use all that stuff. So um, it is something we are looking into. That uh, right now you do have to log out. Um, 
I will say this. Um, if you if you immediately need a fix for this, hit up support. And if, if it's the same person using it, we'll make you a deal <laughs> on a new membership, essentially, like a, a lower cost version that you could just install with a new email and you're just ready to go. Uh, I just wanted to make sure that you guys knew, like, if it really is that much of a pain in the butt uh, and to switch, hit us up and we'll basically get a second seat that is, it will have to be a new account. It will have to be a new email. We don't have all that figured out quite yet, but I just wanted to make sure you guys knew that that is still an option. We want to make that right for you guys. We are also looking into like more of a better fix for that. And this is exactly why we show up and do these live shows too, to listen exactly to plus members like you and make sure it's easy to use. That's like what we want it to be. So yeah. thank you, Walter. We're looking into that and uh, always appreciate the the feedback and those questions. We're going to make that um, better. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I want it to be better. I got two machines, guys. Me too. Me too. Um, I 100% get it. Uh, let's see here. We got some benchmarks from Sean. I appreciate it. I'm way back in the stack here. Let me scroll down, make sure we're not seeing any more uh, last-minute questions here. And then um, and then we'll move on. We got a oh, classic Cinema 4D question. Can you guys explain how to bool properly in Cinema 4D? <laughs> I struggled for years with that. Um. As far as I know, there's really no secret to booling proper properly. Uh, bool, bools in Cinema 4D have always been a little b b b buggy, a little inconsistent. That's maybe a better way to say it. Inconsistent. And uh, the only the only advice I have is changing the uh, um, amount of geometry that your bools or your your object has. Because essentially you're getting weird intersections that and 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 it doesn't quite know what to do with these triangles or whatever it is, uh, and literally the only thing that's worked for me and maybe there's a more specific way to do it, but for me, the best way is like if I want to bool with like a cube and it's not working, I literally like crank the cube up and add more polygons, and or less sometimes too, uh, just literally playing with the amount of geometry that the bool or the object has sometimes gets that fixed. Chad, you got any any suggestions for this one too? You bumped into this one? I mean, booleans, I tend to stay away from them if I can um, because they are buggy. They can be weird. Um, I kind of uh, I kind of stay away from them if possible. I'll just model it out and, and figure that out. Um, but they're, it's just you know, tricky. they're it's buggy tricky. in every piece of software I've ever used with the exception of like, you know, a NURB space modeler um where they are kind of like built on that premise but uh no boolean operations are buggy in every single app i've ever used yeah that that that's important it's not just a cinema 4d thing it's just a 3d thing uh one other little thing i'll have you do depending on what type of bool you're trying to pull off also check out the volume measure uh because that's that's a little bit more consistent it's not exactly a bool i'll call it but you could do a lot more subtraction and re removing and revealing and all that kind of stuff uh with the volume measure and the volume uh what's the other word creator whatever they call it so or you could that, you could also look at this is actually a good segue to uh what octane just released in 2021.1 which is a clip geo shader very similar to how arnold's clip geo works so if you're looking for like a render time boolean a boolean that you know separates or, or subtracts something from something else but is at render time and not necessarily creating any geometry which is which can be great for those like you know cutaway animations where you have like you know uh, i'm just thinking of like a medical animation of like a skull that like you know wipes back and you see like stuff inside of it or whatever so check out that if you're if you're uh, an Arnold or an Octane user, they have a clip geo shader that can do quite a bit of cool stuff with that. Yeah, check out the Arnold uh, video. I think it's in the Plus library. And um, yeah, I haven't played with the Octane thing. I remember in using it in Arnold and loving that feature. So now that it's in Octane, I got to play around with that. that yeah, I was fun. playing around with it yesterday or day before, I think. Uh, Jonas, uh, plus member here has a quick question. Is texture kit pro compatible with R25? I cannot find the materials after installing Uh great question. You are correct. Um, the R25, uh, got rid of the content browser, which has been a part of cinema 40 since I started using it. I'm not sure how long it's been around and they replaced it with their, I'm going to get the name wrong. 
what do they officially call it, Chad? They're they're like it's called the asset browser or asset manager. Asset manager. Uh, asset I'll manager. I want to say. So, uh, the content browser, which is how we delivered things like TextureKit Pro and CityKit too, by the way, um, is gone. So where is it? What do you do? Well, hit up. First of all, hit up customer support, um, and they'll and and also look in our FAQ. We have a, a hey, how do I put TextureKit Pro? How do I put CityKit in R25? We have a little page there for you to show you how to do it. Um, and essentially, you know, it's it's going to be converting it to the the new browser, asset browser. Um, Rachel uh, said it right there. Uh, you have to import the old LIB4D files. Uh, super easy. So hopefully, uh, maybe Rachel, if you could find that article, boom, just saw it. Oh, that's Clip Geo. <laughs> but um, take a look at our FAQ and and uh, check that out. I will say, you know, TextureKit Pro, uh, if you're wondering, is for physical render only. Um, and so if you're using physical render, TextureKit Pro is uh, the best way to, to start using some uh, Grayscale Gorilla materials in there. But if you want the latest material collections, all the new stuff that we're releasing, those are all um, for Arnold, Octane, and Redshift um, renderers. And those do not rely on the content browser nor the new asset library or asset browser. <laughs> it actually um, it uses the Grayscale Gorilla uh, library, which you could download with the hub, and it's super easy to search and find and drag and drop, and it's all right there for you. Um, so thanks for that question. Uh, definitely check in with uh, customer support and our FAQ, and it'll show you exactly how to get all that stuff set it up. Uh, all right, let me uh, let me scroll through here real quick, Chad, and then we'll jump into um, rendering news. Um, let's see here. As an Arnold user, we'll kind of ramp into some rendering stuff with some render questions. As uh, Seiko, hope I'm pronouncing that right. Says, I'm an Arnold user in Cinema 4D. Is there a way to learn all of the nodes faster than learning from scratch? Chad, I know you're always playing with the Arnold nodes. Got any uh, advice? Join Grayscale Gorilla Plus. We have the best <laughs> Arnold training and known to man. Yeah, the Arnold training inside of Plus is really killer. If you're a member, go check that out. Um, Rachel will pop up a link for you. And, um, you know, any any like first step tips for the nodes? Um, I think it, it's understand. I it. don't know of any, there's no like magic solution. The, the only thing I can tell you is that have a goal in mind, start with a goal uh, of creating something and yeah. then try to figure out how to use the nodes to make that goal. Cause if you go into it trying to like, Oh, I have to learn every single node and I have to know what every single node does, then you'll just like, you'll go crazy. So just have a goal in mind, a simple, simple goal and set out to create it. And if you can't figure it out, then check out the training on Grayscale Gorilla Plus. We have a ton of Arnold training. That'll kind of hopefully, hopefully, you know, knock something loose and get you going in the right direction. Yeah, and just start building on that knowledge bit by bit. Yeah, it's actually the same training, if I'm rem remembering correctly, Chad, that you watched when you wanted a deeper dive into Arnold. Um, and that's why we, we uh, brought it here to Grayscale Gorilla Plus. For that exact yeah. reason, you knew it was quality training. You learned a ton from it. I'm like, let's let's give this to everybody in plus. So definitely yeah. go check that out. Um, Mograph plus stuff. It's great. Yeah, they do a great job. Uh, all right, uh, a few more questions here. We'll jump into render news. Uh, Ricardo's clarifying his X particles question. Let me see if I can understand this one about looping X particles. Uh, how would the first frame uh, of an emitter? Uh, being modified by turbulence match the last frame of the emitter animation for looping. Um, so a couple That's of things. So one. it's tough. So if you're animating uh, like a position, a rotation or something that comes back to zero, let's say, you know, there's tons of tools built into signal that help you do that. We got the looping modifier. We got noise, which is built for looping. Like you can get animated noise that that loops on whatever frame you tell it to. Um, and without however many seconds you need your animation for, like Signal's really built for that. However, it sounds like what you're talking about is like, okay, you have an emitter and it's emitting like a thousand particles at once. And let's say it's just a constant stream of particles and you want that to loop back around seamlessly. And that is harder to control because Signal can't tell 
X particles, you know, to emit this exact amount of particles in this exact pattern. That's all built in of X particles. What I what I would think though is there could be some ways inside of X particles. You may want to bug them and hit up their support and see if they have a way to emit on a loop or emit using a shader that is looping uh, or emit in a way where it does come back to the same pattern over and over again. Because that's all you're really trying to do is make it look like noise and then eventually it comes back around to the same pattern of noise. And if that's the case, I, I have a feeling there's probably a way to do that in X particles using their looping tools. Um, and I would, I would double check with them or maybe somebody in the chat has it. But if you're looking to take a parameter or a group of parameters and have them be random and come back to zero signals like made for that. So, um, yeah, I, I hope that made sense. Is that, did, did I explain yeah. that properly there, Chad? Uh, I would, I would just say that, you know, if you want to loop the position of your emitter, like an actual emitter, then signal is perfect for that. You can, you know, make it go up and down and up and down and over there. Particles are in the, by definition, random and dynamic mostly so getting them to loop properly the beginning frame and the end frame is going to be almost impossible so that's just not going to be an easy thing and that's something that we don't do we're not x particles we don't we don't write x particles that's on that's their deal um but yeah nick you're correct like if you can come up with a way in x particles to make sure that the emission is absolutely like uh uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's not a random emission. It's emitting from the same place on this on the emitter every single frame or every yeah, what's you know, that tenth word? frame. It's like predictable or yeah, like a predictable emission. Then you yeah. can might be able to get it to loop. But the problem is, as soon as you add a turbulence, forget it. Your particles aren't going to loop. So it you know particles are just hard to loop because they are by definition kind of dynamic and random. Yeah, yeah. Uh, all right, a couple more things here. We'll jump into more news. Joel uh, is. Maybe it's a question, maybe he's uh, ask, answering somebody above. This is a good reminder that we do have uh, some of the best model uh, modeling training inside of Grayscale Gorilla Plus for you members out there that are joining us today. Uh, go check it out. Um, Making it look great, 11 is all about hard surface modeling. And if you're looking to do that, it's built into your Plus account. Go check it out. Awesome training if you're looking to model. Jake, thank you for the link. This is the link to the Arnold Clip Geo. Appreciate that. Oh, it's on YouTube. Awesome. Thought that was in plus. Thank you, Jake. Good to see you, man. Hope you're doing well. Uh, let's see here. Darren, thanks. Asset browser. I'm way back. Let me scroll up. Um, Mike, thank you for that. Uh, MLG 11. MILG 11 is the best course for modeling. Um, Cinema 40's modeling capabilities aren't the most productive. So um, uh, modeling tools really help speed things up. So they're recommending some modeling tools. I've seen those before as well. Those look good. Let me keep scrolling. All right. I think we might be just about time to um, to jump into some uh, rendering training. And if I missed your question there, I just kind of scrolled to the to the front of the line here. Um, we'll we'll jump back into answering your questions just in a bit. But let's talk a little bit about the um, uh, render news. Are, uh, Chad, are the are the render wars back? Or are they over? Like, what's what's going on? No, we're not. We're not, we're not bringing that back. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. What do yeah, you want to talk about first? There's um, a new Octane update, a new Redshift update, and a new Arnold update. I know many of them are, you know, fixes and little updates here and there. But what are you, you know, what are you most excited about? And what can you tell us about the three uh, new updates out there? Um, <clears throat> yeah, so uh, let's see. Redshift uh, 3.059 came out recently. Um, just a bunch of bug fixes, nothing too important there. Um, I am seeing uh, that they recently did fix. There were some color issues uh, with their one of their uh, settings menus. They did not update the color scheme to match R25, so a lot of the sliders were like disappearing into the interface. So that's been fixed. Um, there hasn't been many new features from Redshift in a really long time. And I'm hearing all over the place that, that people are getting, frankly, a little bit tired of it. And they are looking for some new movement from Redshift there. And uh, people have been waiting a really long time for random walk. They've been waiting a really long time for some new features. 
And so they've been a little bit slow. I haven't really seen too many like, oh, wow, kind of moments from them lately. Uh, so hopefully that's on the horizon. The Trello board that they, if those of you that don't know, Redshift actually has a public Trello board where you can actually look at their development cycle and not necessarily cycle, but you see what's on their roadmap and you see what they're, what they're moving on to and developing. And um, yeah, I hope, I hope I see some movement, some left to right movement on that Trello board. <laughs> soon um let's see uh octane big news there 2020 point 2021.1 uh preview is now out uh for cinema 40 users and it's got a lot of really strong uh stuff in it let me just open up my notes here um i'm mostly excited i think about uh the clip geo i'm excited about that uh, I'm also excited about the new curvature node. Uh, I'm also excited about all the new math nodes and new like um, kind of just like new nodes that they've added to to uh, Octane. I'm excited to play with that. Um, I will say they did say that if a, a stable version is available for Cinema 40 right now, I downloaded it and played with it for a couple hours and it crashed a lot. So I don't know how stable it is. Uh, so take that with a grain of salt. Don't bring it into production just yet. Uh, definitely play with it and um, you know have some fun playing around with these cool new features. By the way, uh, another uh, thing that I enjoyed, uh, well, I, I got a little bit of a critique, is the Clip Geo. Their implementation of Clip Geo is interesting. First of all, Arnold's Clip Geo only works on CPU, not GPU. So that's kind of like, I wish that Arnold work on CPU or GPU rather. So um, Octane figured that out, but there's no way that I'm aware of. And if you're out there and you know the answer, please hit me up in the comments. There's no way for me to have Clip Geo affect one object and not another. And Arnold used a thing called trace sets where you set, you simply assign a number to an object or some sort of identifier to an object. And then you can tell it, okay, cool, clip out of this one, but don't clip out of that one. I didn't see anything like that in my first test of uh, Octane's Clip Geo. Um, but it is fast and it was working pretty well. Uh, the new curvature in Octane works well, although I was getting a lot of crashes with it. Um, so hopefully you'll have more luck with it, um, but I'll be watching for updates on that as well. Um, in Arnold news, uh, last time, I don't think we talked about Arnold 7. Arnold 7 came out, uh, with some more options for denoisers. I think they have like three denoisers right now. And I think I might be like one of the only, maybe I'm crazy. I want to sh see a sh virtual show of hands. How many people out there are actually using denoisers that are built in to your renderers? Because I don't and I don't like them. I don't find them to be useful, but it feels like every renderer has like three denoising options and they've spent God knows how much time making these things happen and I just don't use them. So if you're if you're out there and you use denoisers in Redshift, Arnold, Octane, whatever, hit us up because I'd love to know because I think I'm, okay, so I'm already seeing them come up. I use them all the time. Okay, I'm crazy. I guess I'm crazy. That, that settles it. Um, yeah, they've it's got those a few... eagle eyes of yours, Chad. That's why you got to get the 16 inch. You know, you you, you see every detail. You got to get the 14 inch, and then uh, you know you don't see the noise. Well, I use Neat Video Denoiser, and I think Neat Video Denoiser is a lot better than all these built-in ones because these built-in mm -hmm. ones are, you know, the Optics Denoiser, Intel Denoiser. I find them to be kind of mushy and like make everything kind of look smeary. So I don't really care for them too much. And and yeah, I agree. Uh, it looks like uh, MPB Mike, uh, MKE, I believe that's uh, Mike from Milwaukee, maybe. Uh, yeah, they are too aggressive, I think, which is why I kind of do it somewhere else. Anyway, uh, moving on. Um, they also added an update to Material X in Arnold 7. Um, and you know, I gotta, I gotta say Arnold 7 is not, there's just not that like, wow factor in this release there's not they added some new imager stuff which is uh for those of you who don't know what imagers are they're kind of like post post effects in redshift it's their version of that um they did add some color curves in there some tone mapping oh aces is on by default now 
can I think aces might be default color space in all three renderers now, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe not Octane. Um, I, I I think maybe not Octane, but Redshift and Arnold now are aces by default. You're welcome. Um, and let's <laughs> <laughs> let's uh, keep moving on here. What else? Uh, That's above yeah. green check boxes for me, Chad. Just so you know. Yes. So yeah, I mean, all in all, I'm seeing a slowdown in like the wow factor features in Arnold. Definitely a huge slowdown in wow fe wow features from Redshift. And Octane is coming on strong, bringing the new features, bringing stuff. They're listening. Uh, I like that. Uh, it's just the stability is really still a problem for me on that platform. But I'm I'm keeping keeping my options open. Yeah, I've um I've been heavy uh, Octane for quite a long time, and I haven't updated to the new uh, the latest version yet. Um, but I've been I've been pretty stable ever since my new machine, which came what in the spring maybe, early summer. You came out and dropped it off and helped set it up and got me rolling. Yeah. It's been it's been pretty good since then, um, and uh, super fast. It, you know, I don't push Octane to its limits. You know, I'm not I'm not the billion poly, uh, polygon guy. You know, um, but uh, it's been really, really uh, pretty stable for me. W what would you recommend for someone like me that's like, okay, I'm running stable. It's looking good. This new version is it like a new version of you know Cinema 4D or something where you just kind of want to wait until the little fixes pop up like how how do these renderers do these releases like you even called the octane one like this is a special release or whatever they called it how long do you wait until you make the new version your 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 working stable go to well version? see i i you when i was in production i would very rarely update i would very only if some like really amazing feature that we had to use on a job came out and we wanted to play with it we would update in between gigs but if i'm in production i'm not changing anything until whatever job it is that we're working on is done now me here at grayscale gorilla i have to try all the new stuff so i'm always running into new software bugs and hiccups and things like that so for me um i kind of have to but for you it's really it's it's about like if you're just playing around then just update and see what happens. If you're doing something super important, that's when I would sort of like be like, oh, maybe I'll wait till it's a bit more stable. But yeah. Uh, okay. Awesome. Good to know. Um, we got some more uh, links and questions here in the chat. We got Octane people linking up here. Uh, there was a question about Plus earlier, but I, I think I missed it just talking about this news so post that one again happy to always uh help you guys out plus members are looking to get into it um adam says just try it <laughs> install it let's go you don't know how many you know how how nervous i am with with uh with my my with a, with any pc that is just working fine for me i just don't you know i don't want to <laughs> i don't want to update it i've had i've had bad luck you know i've had bad luck computer Computers, I like computers. I don't know if computers like me. You know what I mean? I just want to make sure uh, I'm doing it right. And so I, I, I think I, you, you have PC PTSD is what you have. <laughs> that's what that's that. where we just made. We're just going to coin that term right there. I'm going to wear that T-shirt. Definitely. Uh, awesome. Um, any graphics cards recommendations other than get the fastest NVIDIA card you can and of can afford anything else to to worry about in the or or that's available you know oh anything man that about? the availability is still tough i mean it, it yeah 3090 3080 ti's i'm hearing are uh some people are telling me about those are looking good um yeah i mean it's it's really like what can you afford it, buy as many as you can afford yeah everything's pretty tough as far as uh, availability and uh yeah i mean if you could afford it and it's available get 3090 it's fast and it's very hot and it could be yeah. a little i don't know if the that i don't know if is the card loud or is the fan in my machine to make sure that the, the the card is cooled enough loud like i I, don't, I guess i don't really know the answer to that one but it is a it is yeah, a they monster. don't tell you that 
and it sounds like a monster and it heats the room like a monster but it is amazing to work with with those th these new cards it is bonkers it's, the speed is so nuts um yeah puget go buy a puget we have a yeah. we have a link on our uh, website and those guys are amazing and if you buy one tell them we sent you yeah uh th here's the cheat code that you know it's hard to say for those of you trying to you know wait and stock best buy or however you're trying to get graphics cards the best thing you can do if you want to get back to work right now is go work with a manufacturer like puget that has access to these cars and can simply build you a monster machine so you can get back to work i mean yep. I, I said this earlier in the stream and it, again this isn't for uh hobbyists and and you know students or whatever but if you do this for a living and you want to get a new machine and you don't want to spend you know hours days weeks <laughs> learning how to build and put it together and make sure it's compatible and and then and then fix it if it breaks go work, work with the manufacturer that has access to these cards that has a warranty that builds you a machine that works and get back to work and so if you want to check out our machines you can go check those out we have we've got an article rachel link it up oh she already did look at that thank you rachel um but that that is that again is is the best bang for your buck spending money on tools uh machines the, the coffee that you like surround yourself with the things that speed you up and um you will never regret that if, if you have clients to please bosses to please um that that really is the the way the way forward sarah loves her 3090s okay one thirty nine. i mean that's great <laughs> <laughs> if you can get your hands on any of these cards right now, you're 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 in you're in the you're in the mix. All right, um, <laughs> Mike. <laughs> all right, let's uh, jump back. Chad, thank you so much for the update on all the renders here. Um, looks like everyone's uh, pushing these updates and add new stuff. What was the globby octane rendering that I've been seeing? Is that a new node or something that they that they released? I've been seeing some like testing octane oh yeah globby so that, glob renders what yeah thanos posted some uh killer uh shader tests that um are all random walk uh subsurface light scattering which octane's had for a bit now um though i haven't played with it but it's the same random walk sort of thing that's in arnold um which you know why doesn't redshift have random walk yet but yeah, so, they're beautiful. Yeah, so that that wasn't about the gloppy as much as it was showing off the subsurface. Is that is that what I'm getting? That's correct. Yeah. Okay, Sarah. Yep. I'm I'm sorry. You're right. Just the one. <laughs> Sarah, it's all right, Sarah. You're, Sarah. Doing great. you're killing it out there. Trust me. There are many people in this chat that would love your one thirty ninety. Right Jake's now. got Jake's got one thirty ninety. He's okay with it. Oh, Jake. Jake, there with you. Yeah, he's he, back is there. Is he chatting, chatting right within the, the office? Thank you. Yeah, Jake. he's sitting he's back the there, but man. we're on such a crazy delay that he's not going to know that I mentioned his name until like, oh, there he is. <laughs> oh, hi. <laughs> hi, Jake. <laughs> <laughs> it was like five minutes later, he'll know that I mentioned his name. Uh, well, we opened the door for um, for talking about graphics cards. So, you know, I guess, oh, I guess we get what we asked for. <laughs> Sarah paid extra for it. That's another way to do it, by the way. Like, well, let's talk about something different, it. like materials or something. Yeah, I remember what it was. Somebody uh, earlier, if you have that question again, post it. I'll put it on the screen. They're asking, uh, hey, you know, other than this training stuff you're talking about, what, you know, he's like, sell me on plus. I didn't, he didn't exactly say that like that. It's like, what other stuff does it have? I would say this. If you're using one of those third-party renders we just mentioned, Arnold, Octane, or Redshift, go check out our material collections. Um and the more that we put out, um, yeah, I, 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 I won't tease what's coming out before the end of the year. But mm. if you mm. if you use <laughs> if you use um, those uh, three renders, definitely go check out Grace Go Gorilla Plus. You get access to all of our material collections, HDRIs, plugins that help you uh, speed up your workflow, especially if you use those th three renders because all of our uh, materials, unlike a lot of other material collections, are natively working directly with those renders, which means you can just drag and drop them into your scene 
and you have exactly what that uh, material uh, does right on your object. I mean, everything, the, the bump map, the normal map, the way the specular is cut just right, the, 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 every setting that Chad can go in and make it look as good as possible and is turned on for you. So you drag and drop it and you're done. I would say that's probably the biggest thing to go check out if you haven't seen that. Um, and then of course, all the plugins uh, that we've created over the last 12 years are right in your account, easy to download, easy to use, uh, things like Signal that we talked about earlier, like Kit Pro, HDRI Link, um, all of this stuff is right in your account, ready to use. And Jonas, thank you for that one, He's helping us out here, saying, and of course, all the training, all the courses inside of Grayscale Gorilla U. And uh, that's um, over 500 hours of training, including the Redshift training. We got Octane training uh, from um, uh, Octane Jesus. We got uh, um, Arnold. We got all three uh, renders covered in there. So if you've been looking to dive deeper into these nodes and learn, actually learn the what these uh, renders can do over just the surface things, we have all of that stuff inside of Plus Two. So that's the little uh, um, that's the pitch. I'm sitting here staring at what we got coming up. It's on my screen Ooh. right now. What we have coming out soon and uh, little uh, screen share, little screen people, share. Chat. People that are, you know, our materials are really good. Our surface imperfection maps are also really good, and uh, everything is just yeah. It's going to be a great. It's going to be a great release. This next release. I know Rachel. Rachel's going to get mad at you if you keep teasing stuff. Look at. I'm just. I didn't mention anything. I'm good. <laughs> I didn't break anything. Any rules? I'm staring uh, at what we're about to put out on my screen right now. You can't see it out there. I can see it. And Jake, just sent, looking... Jake just sent me the 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 brand new new, and it looks good. Oh, Jake! Jake with the ultimate. Te they said they're looking into your glasses to see if there's any oh, yeah. any hints. Let me see if I can like position there <laughs> yeah. it is you can see, see it. that shader ball oh my god Z <laughs> lean in there this is everybody get, i know like, there's everybody uh, on the uh, chat right now yeah dude, um it's it be is good. really amazing uh Best before assets. the end of the year there will be a large update and what's really fun um is all plus members get that stuff right when it comes out they have access to it day one so uh go check it out go check out plus rachel throw up a link to plus just to learn more a little bit more about it like I said, if you use these three renders, um, I mean, it's the renders are such a big part of what we all do all day, and 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 we we went um, all in on making sure that they are compatible and ready to use in those three renders. So I would that would be that would be my suggestion. Airhorn, <laughs> Jonas, I'm gonna try to, gonna try to like get the reflection. Oh my God, that's too good! Oh, no, oh, no, you oh, can't. Oh. It's too good. <laughs> Black Mirror, <laughs> Black Mirror, watch out! That's too cl That's too good. You're gonna get screenshots, Chad. And no. nobody knows. <laughs> no, that was actually just a picture of my house. It's, so jokes on you. Oh damn it! Um, let's see here. Um, join the dark side. Thank you, Rachel. Thanks for the link. Thank you all. Um, yeah. So. Let's uh, let's get back into some more Q and A. Um, if you have obviously any questions uh, about Plus, I know there's a lot of new members that come join this show when we have it. So if you have any questions about anything happening, um, you know, ask it of course in the chat. And then uh, anything else you guys are up to, you know, um, when it comes to working faster uh, in Cinema 4D um, and in 3D in general, you know, I I think to me one of the unlocks when I when I was really struggling with 3d was learning you know like looking through the manual waiting hoping to find a button that was like how do they make it look so damn good like what what setting am i missing here what is it gi well back in the day yeah gi was a huge help <laughs> i'll tell you that one but now with all these new renders gi is kind of like a given right it's like built in um and so what are those things that you can learn and add and do to to make your renders stand apart or this uh, look dev thing, which by the way, did you see percentages on look dev? I saw one that said 50%. Um, did, you, did you happen to catch the chat when I was asking them like, hey, put up your percentage of look dev? Cause yeah, I saw some people were like 50, some people were like, I mean, it was a mixture all over the board, but more people saying that it was part of their, uh, the dom one of the more dominant parts of their workflow than it wasn't part of their more dominant workflow. 
Yeah. I mean, if if you're tuning into our stream, chances are you probably are using or doing look dev in a significant part of your workflow because a lot of what we do is built for for doing look dev. Yeah, I I see some questions here I'm going to jump to real quick, but I I did want to point that out. If you do look dev, that's one of the most like helpful things is the way that our textures work and hdri link by the way is great for this too is just like getting something dialed in and you're like okay that looks good let me do a screenshot and let me save this version and then going you know totally opposite with it or taking it in another direction you're like i wonder if this is more of a you know spooky backlit thing you could do that so quickly new material drag a new material from the library change the hdri and get options because that's really what it's about early on is like tweaking and playing and experimenting until it looks the way that your client wants or you, what's in your head. And I would say if you're doing that kind of look dev stuff, um, definitely things like HDRI link and our materials are, are huge, huge help for that. Um, so yeah, any, any other feedback for look dev would be great. Let's jump into some of these questions. Um, uh, people ask about Corona render. We're we're always looking at what the next render is to to kind of climb the charts. Let's say Corona's in the mix, right? Corona's in the mix. So uh, we always uh, appreciate when people shout that out. Um, right now we're not compatible with Corona, but we 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 look into that stuff and take it real seriously. Question for Chad: What what, what makes Chad happy? What makes you happy, Chad? What <laughs> makes me happy? Um, my car makes me happy. Uh, um, you guys my... are so cute together. <laughs> uh, coming here every day and making awesome stuff for all of you makes me very happy. Uh, beer and bourbon and coffee and dogs and my family. And I mean, I could just go on and on. I know music. Chad, Chad's big. Music oh, music for yeah. sure. Yes, absolutely. Design. Denny's, oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, Denny says beer, wine, or both. Bourbon. Chad, you, yeah, not. I'm not a big wine guy. Yeah, I, I like beer. I like bourbon. Uh, crim, Christmas promo, Grayscale Gorilla Pro, Plus. Uh, yeah, maybe, maybe, <laughs> maybe something <laughs> wintry. Some winteries coming up. Uh, let's see here. Uh. Boss is says, uh, how much is subscription for Cinema 40 like the base plan? I don't actually know right now. Uh, go yeah. to maxon.net, and I think they have different versions. And then, of course, they have Maxon 1 that includes uh, Redshift and Red Giant uh, plugins, all their stuff. Uh, and there's probably something else I'm missing. I think that sculpting tool they just announced is now a part of Maxon 1. Um right. But what else? Uh, what's their base level plan like for a month or a year? Seven, 80 bucks? I think it's annual sub. I think it's like seven hundred and twenty bucks. Yeah, and I and I, the monthly is um, seventy, eighty bucks, something like that. Yeah, it's some somewhere in there. That sounds about right. Uh, anyone anyone using Embergen with uh, Otoy? Um, I did see that as well. Uh, Octane has a, or I should say, Otoy has a version of their membership that includes Embergen in it. And uh, there's some really cool stuff coming out of there. It's like a smoke and fire and particle system as far as, as far as uh, you know, I've, I've played a little bit around with it. And uh, it's pretty cool. I think a lot of these packages are, are getting pretty exciting. The way that Octane adds in stuff. They also have like what is it world creator or whatever else in there and then you know of course the cinema 4d package you get redshift and red giant stuff like some really crazy packages coming together right now where you could just like go try that stuff or the the one client where you need fire effects and smoke effects it's like built right in and you just go use it pretty exciting um jonas thank you i appreciate that means a lot um let's see here how do you know (laughs) The 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 never ending question. How do how do I know what blend mode is the right one for what pass when compositing in in After Effects? Um, Chad, do you do you, do you do you first of all do you still composite with separate passes, or are you like a you like a beauty pass or die kind of guy these days? And <laughs> and do you have any any help 
for Chris, who's trying to find that right blend mode. Because I, I forget, too. I forget all that stuff. Yeah. Um, I am a beauty pass. What'd you say? Beauty pass. Beauty pass or, or die, die, Chad. Beauty pass or die. <laughs> like, that's me. Um, yeah, I don't do the full uh, AOV, like, rebuild the beauty thing anymore. It's just too time consuming. And it, it, it was kind of a thing that you had to do to kind of tweak the look to make it look better. And now all these with aces and GPU and all that, it just looks so good right off the bat that I usually just ended up making matte passes out of everything. So um, to answer your question though, Chris, uh, there is a specific formula that you can, um, that you, you need to use. And it, it actually will show you the correct passes to rebuild your beauty. I wrote it down somewhere in like a Google Keep a long time ago. Um, and I'm sure there's a million places online that have posted that. But if you can't find it and you are a Plus member, hit me up in the Plus channel on our Slack and I'll try to dig it up for you. Um, but yeah. Awesome. Uh, let's see here. Uh, we got a question about uh, any other any other tutorials in Grayscale Gorilla Plus available in other languages or translated? Uh, not right now, not right now. This is this is uh, something we see in our um, uh, support as well. Right now, it is English only, and I I don't I think there's subtitles for some of it, but not any other languages, unfortunately, right now. Uh, it is something we're looking into. If there's uh, like a service we can send it out to and, and do that kind of stuff. It's something we're we're definitely looking into. I do know also uh, s stuff that is on YouTube uh, that YouTube does some of that built in. It's not 100% across all of our old videos, but I, you probably already know this. YouTube's got some of that translation built in. Uh, thank you for the question. Uh, Bo, <laughs> Bo, this is perfect Bo question for you. What's bourbon, Chad? <laughs> oh man um that changes uh every couple months or so i'll i'll switch it up um i was doing a couple different blends of old forester for a while blanton's when i can find it but it's impossible to find um lately i've been drinking mitgers um i did a i did some hudson for a while uh yeah i kind of switch it up Bo, what is what's your favorite, Bo? That's what yeah, I want to know. know. Good to Give see me you, something man. new to try, and better yeah. yet, if it's, if you send me a bottle, that would be even better. <laughs> I'm just saying. Well, well, Bo, who knew that that question was was going to turn into um, such a demand <laughs> from from Chad? We'll make materials for bourbon. <laughs> Good to see you, Bo. Hope you're doing well, man. Um, let's see here. Uh, Bum, bum, bum. Yeah, third party. Absolutely. Um, Jerome's got a price here. Is that true? 99 for a month for cinema? Or is that max on one? I'm not sure. There's no context there. Sorry about that. Oh, look um, at that. Somebody posted the actual, uh, the, the, the formula for rebuilding the beauty. I go by Zach. I don't know oh, if you really? can see that one. Like yeah, the, I'll, I'm probably scrolling to it. Can we give some love to the Terrazzo materials pack? Yeah, this is very good. If you haven't checked that one out, uh, go check it out on the website. I think you can get it to it. The best way to see what's new is we have a link on our blog that that's called What's New and Plus, I think it's called. And that way you can see what we've been releasing. If you haven't checked it out in the last year, there's so much new stuff, materials, surface imperfections, um, new plugins, uh, and then all the stuff launching before the end of the year as well. So definitely go check it out, including this new Terrazzo pack. It is really fun. And um, I've been digging the uh, the tech products pack. I still go to that one all the time. I just That stuff just looks so good. Uh, just wait. Just wait. Just, just add wait. <laughs> all right. Let's see here. Um Shout out to Nick's old school solo podcast. It was just in, such an inspiration at that time. Thank you for that. Uh, those are, oh gosh, probably going on almost 10 years old at this point. Um, and if you are a if you are new to the 3D world, if you're new to Cinema 4D, you're looking to understand a little bit more about how 
people do this for a living. We talked a ton about that in early, early, early podcasts. And we still get into that sometimes on these shows. Um, it's a little harder, of course, to be separated from the early years just by age to, to, to always give the best advice as, as from where we are today. However, uh, some of the fundamental stuff just does not change. Putting yourself out there, letting people know what you do, um, being open about your, uh, your, what you're learning, asking for help, showing your work, creating a, a daily or weekly habit of posting something. Um, so if, if you're interested in that, go check out some of the early podcasts. We talk like specifically about how to, how to, you know, learn faster, how to create your career and how essentially to do this stuff for a living. And, um, uh, you know, it's, it was like my dream as a kid to like play with computers for a living. And, and now, you know, it's, it's like half of everyone's job these days, whether it's a spreadsheet or a, or a, or octane. Um, but it's such a, a weird thing to, to go from maybe a more traditional job and say like, how do you, what is this? How do you, how do you approach this even? So if you're in that part of your career, definitely go check out those early podcasts. Thank you for the shout out as well. All right. Um, let's see here. Uh, I think race go gorilla should, I love, I love when things start like that. This is good into, I think they should tap into the quickly growing blender community. Have you considered trying it? I have not tried it in a while. I've heard, um, good things. What's it called? That, it's called, uh, Chad is called blender. It's called blender. Be blender. Yeah. No. Yeah. 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 No, <laughs> I don't know. It's I never heard of it. No, I'm just joking. It's uh, what what's really great is it's free. Go and and you can go try it and download it. And um, I have not. I have not done it. I've heard really good things about it. Uh, uh I I've heard mixed you know feelings from people switching from Cinema to Blender and what's there and what's not and where it all is. If you imagine like a new interface was weird, like imagine now switching to a new an entirely new thing. So I would just say, if you're interested in it, go check it out. Uh, we don't have any immediate plans. And, Thank you, you Jake. Know... Oh my God, Jake. Come on, man. Jake, you want to say hi? Where's mine? All right, Jake's going to peek on and say hi because he brought me. Oh yeah, he brought me, say hi, Jake. Uh, everybody, thank, What's up, everybody thank Jake. Hi, Jake. Just popping in to say hi. You might see me in chat. <laughs> I appreciate you, man. Just delivering bourbon. Oops, All right. Sorry. I hit, I hit the mic with my bourbon. Oh my gosh! Stop bragging, dude. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Killing me. That sweet, oh, that God. sweet Kentucky. <laughs> Damn it! I gotta like ah that water, that beautiful <laughs> Culligan. That Michigan water. Mm. Wait, no, Michigan water's bad, right? Yeah, I if mean, you live in, if you live in Flint, it's bad. Flint's getting Flint's getting better. You want to you want to be careful. Uh Let's see here. Bum, bum. We got Redshift. We got uh, FUI tutorials. Yeah, that's true. There are not a ton of FUI tutorials, although I keep like bugging Robin to do a tutorial because she's like so good at that stuff. But Fooey. I don't know of any. Yeah, I don't know of any like Fooey off the top of my head, although there was some good uh, Fooey kind of stuff that was a part of the Maxon Roadshow want to mm -hmm. say they did a couple mm -hmm. demos like that i would check those out if you haven't checked out the max on road shows uh go check them out go uh search the youtubes they did a great job and brought it all over it's kind of nice it was like right before the pandemic <laughs> they like w we went to go see everybody in all their all their cities and then uh and then of course i haven't seen anybody since by the way super fomo not going to nft nyc it's like half the cinema 40 communities out there uh dancing dancing to dead mouse so cheers to you guys i miss you i didn't even know about that thing when did when did that when was that it's like the all week maybe it started last weekend or something like that and uh people dropped his new like physical nft thing mm. that looks bonkers um i saw gosh like i said half the cinema 40 you know nft community was out there i bet you brad went out there uh i saw kevin from uh maxon was out there like hmm. the whole crew, a ton I mean, of artists, of course. Can't keep track of all this. I know it's it's a lot going on. Um, all right, let's see here. Unopened bottle of Blanton's. 
Oh, Zach. Zach. It's like gold. Zach. Can't find Zach, it. are you a plus member? If not, call me. I might have a membership for you <laughs> in exchange. You... For... <laughs> wow. I'm Bribe. bartering. I'm bartering uh, live. I'm bartering. Chad's like, I'll send you what's on my computer. <laughs> the new the new thing coming out. The new shiny. Before anybody. Uh, all right. Zach, finally, thank you for spelling it out. 100 bucks a month for Max on One when doing yearly billing. So so essentially thousands. 1200 bucks when doing yearly billing. Got it. 150 a month for actual monthly. Thank you. Thank you, Zach. That's for everything, by the way. It's, it's for everything Maxon makes. Is that the right way to say that? Yeah. I think sure. that's correct. Yeah. Real quick, can we do a poll, uh, a, uh, a comment poll? Yeah. Wait. I want to run I wanna polls know. in here? No, no. I'm just like, I want people to just like type in. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. Yeah, this is good. What Because I have a theory that Maxon One, their bundle has gotten a lot of people to start using Redshift. Mm. And I want to know people watching of the big three renders that we report on and talk about, what one are you using? Type it in the comment, hit enter, and uh, yeah, pick your click. Let's see where you're at. Wait, so what's the question? Just gotta type in what renderer that you're using right now. Just what? Just ru what render? Let's go. I'm gonna count as much as I can here. Uh, right. Everybody, I'm... put it in. Hey, and if it's a third party, if it's one we don't support, say it because I want to see. I want to see the 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 mix up here. Physical. Oh man, red look shift, at all this. All octane, redshift, octane, redshift. I probably should have had a method for like tallying this, <laughs> but I'm purely like trying to keep up with my eyeballs. Redshift after cycle and I'm uh, standard a lot of redshift. Quite, a, I mean, it's a smattering. Arnold showed the Arnold people are showing up, Octane people Red. showing up, a lot of Octane, redshift, Arnold, Octane. Redshift. Yeah, it's it seems like a pretty. I'm not seeing any like dominant. Cycle like Corona. Got I gotta throw that one in there. Cycle, thank you, Arnold. Arn oh, but I, wait, don't don't be voting twice now. <laughs> don't, be, don't, be, spamming. don't be spamming this uh mike says we can make a poll so mike um i think we're gonna come out with something before the end of the year for um i think plus users for sure we're gonna do a little survey and get to know just get to know you more mostly ask your favorite bourbon but also your favorite render, what you're using day to day, and some other questions we got for you as we build out. Plus, stay tuned for that. If you guys see that in your inbox, um, please help us out. We we try to make those things really easy uh, to and and quick to um, to fill out. So if you see a little survey, it does us a huge favor. And uh, maybe I'll get that out before the next live show and kind of let you guys know it's in your inbox too. Um, but we're looking to do that for this exact reason see see what the next renderer is if we don't support it see what you guys are using these tools for day to day some of the stuff we ask on these on these calls but i'm going to make it a little bit more specific and we'll uh, of course throw some more fun stuff in there as well uh stay tuned for that one um let's see here don't you guys know what's downloaded more than for the material packs for example <laughs> we do adam we do do you want to know do you want another winner should we tell should we tell adam what the most used let's wait let's wait until the poll <laughs> okay and then 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 we can we can see if people are lying if they're like because we know <laughs> this isn't to catch people in their their <laughs> lies that's more fun it's more dramatic you're, so sin you're like sinister you're like i'll get you i'll get you next time i think it's the bourbon talking honestly oh, i'm so jealous way to way to say the bourbon Again, I appreciate that. I know. Thanks. I'm I'm listen, man, fall and like just a nice glass of bourbon in the fall. There's nothing quite like it. I know. What am I doing? What am I so doing? Good. Um, all right, survey done. <laughs> uh let's see here. All right, let's do a little lightning round. We'll wrap up, guys. Thank you so much, by the way, for coming out. Um, if you could do us a favor, if you're still here, hit the thumbs ups. It helps uh YouTube uh let people know once the recording is done that you know. You're having a good old time that people should watch this um and uh if you're uh subscribed and you want to know when we go live hit that belly bell thing and um 
and what else and stay tuned we got we got a fun end of the year for you guys uh we're gonna take a maybe a little bit longer of a break between this show and the next live show which we will definitely have might not be in two weeks but uh you know kind of when the holidays are getting getting going uh stay tuned we got it we'll have a really fun one for you guys i think we're doing a some some really fun stuff on that show so stay tuned hit the belly bell ring a ding ding thing <laughs> i don't know know what i'm talking about anywhere do the youtube thing that they're all, they're all yelling at you about will you helps us out let's youtube know what we're up to here answering some questions all right throw your last minute questions right in here in the chat we're gonna do a lightning round and then um and then uh maybe i gotta go find some bourbon who knows at this point all right let's get going hey guys just a quick question from uh, art Biz perspective is there any way to soften the overall feel of an octane scene most scenes feel cold mm. hmm. chad you got any any um tips for cold feeling uh arch fizz renders that might warm it up it'll make it look a little more cozy comfy mm. put a put a put a bourbon on the on the table maybe and a fireplace in the corner <laughs> yeah. that'll warm them right up put a dog in there maybe it's curled up on a on a little dog bed and little there's little a cat bag. perched up on a couch back, and it's just purring. If you look lightly. really close, the real secret to all of Chad's renders, it's always a little cat in the corner. That's right. You can't. It's off camera. You can't see it unless you are looking at a reflection <laughs> of, just of a shiny surface. <laughs> it really but it's warms there. up the lighting. And it, um, lives, it lives in my computer, and it hangs <laughs> out in all my scene files. One day we'll we'll give that cat model out, but it's it's kind of priceless at this point. Yeah, it's like really that, the that, secret. Yep. Chad, what I mean, is it? What do we got? A LUT? What do we got? We got you know warm up your lights. What you got? A simple temperature. Trick that, that, temperature. Temperature. Yeah, it's temperature. It's um a lot of it is temperature. A lot of it is uh, picking the right light sources, and I mean it really depends on the arc biz kind of scene that you're doing. If you're if you're trying to show off an interior. Uh, time of day is really important. So um, if you want to warm it up, maybe choose an HDRI or, or set up a su sun sky system that isn't like noon, but maybe a warmer time of the day. Um, and then, of course, white balance and make sure that you're you're uh, uh, skewing it a little bit warm uh, to warm it up a little bit. Um, there, it's not the renderers. Uh, the renderer has no preference to color, really. Um, I mean, Octane does have a little bit of a of a cast to it but um something that you can easily fix uh but yeah i i would say that it's it's just you know knowing uh the tones that you're after and what's the mood and and just using color to your to your benefit there yeah i would um uh dave is recommending the light kit browser we have a ton of presets included with light kit pro if you're dialing in more of a studio look um and if you want that real natural you know feeling you can't beat HDRIs as like a start, you know, um, especially if you could just dial in like a little bit of a indoor scene with a bright window kind of vibe. I love those HDRIs like that have like a bright room feel to them with with some strong, not sunlight strong, but like a big window softbox kind of feel. Those to me tend to feel a little bit warmer. They got some nice shadows wrapping around your objects and just kind of feels a little cozy you know those cozy uh you know like uh not campfire but like cabin in the woods kind of kind of photos when you can capture that and you got like kind of a big window with a darker uh side of the room that to me is kind of the, the where i start for that look so i would i would find an hri that has that large window with a dark corner in the in in the in the uh in in there as well and if there's a cat in there too even better even better uh Can't all go right wrong. Let's, let's see here uh adorable render tips <laughs> thank you yeah i mean <laughs> animals help that's that's a brilliant name for a uh a website or something or no a twitter make, account it's got to be yeah, a twitter account a you need a TikTok account, I think. Yes, oh, no, that's and good. And it, it, it's got to be render tips from the point of view of a cat. Like a, you just like put googly eyes on everything. Yeah, and just like it it, it's got to be. And, and the, the tips are always vaguely about uh, sleeping or uh, catnip or, you know, something like that. that that's great. <laughs> Somebody make that happen. I want to follow that account. Yeah. Um, 
one one last thing and maybe this is a question for you too chad like what um when it comes to mixing lighting temperatures what i i i tend to feel like the more you mix lighting temperatures the more it gives it that that cozy vibe because to me cozy feels and warmth feels like okay you got a little bit of a fire glow in this corner you got a a, a little bit of a like dusk daylight coming in the window which is a little bit more bluey or purple you got a warm fire and maybe you got a lamp that's like you know not a daylight ball but you know a little warmer like a 3000 3800k like reading light and then you know off in the distance the kitchen light is on and that's more of a daylight ball and so to me there's like a mixture of of temperatures that to that that, that i always that's kind of my cheat i guess is to, to mix up those temperatures. And again, good HDRIs um, that are captured at the right time of day, like we like we do with ours, start to do that. But is that, a, is that an okay tip to share, like mix your color temperatures? I mean, keep it realistic, you know? Like I always try to set out, like what am I trying to say? What, am I, what time of day do I think this render is taking place? Where is it? That sort of thing. And then I try to build a lighting to match. If it's if I'm going for like an in situation looking render, I'll use an HDRI because that's just so much more nuance that you're going to get in both the intensity, the light sources, and the temperature from an HDRI than you would from like placing a bunch of area lights and trying to get that look. It's not going to be as easy. So an in situation kind of thing, I'll look for an HDRI that kind of matches the tone that I want. Uh, then I'll augment that with area lights or or spotlights matching whatever source that I think that light is. Is it is this light coming from an incandescent bulb? Well, then it's going to be a warmer color temperature. Is it coming from outdoors skylight? Is that's going to be cooler, and that sort of thing. And then also color grading is important, and and color color correcting your render after it's done. And trying different things with that can really affect the mood and and the vibe uh, of your imagery. Um, yeah, I, I highly recommend uh, learning a little bit of color grading. You don't have to be like a colorist, but learning a little bit about how that works, I think, is is important for sure. Yeah, and if you are a Max on One customer, you get access to the Red Giant Color. Is it Colorista? Is that the name of it? Um, if you have access to it, so if you're compositing in uh, something that's compatible with Red uh, Giant tools, check that out. It's a really well done, like colorizer isn't the right word for it, but like, um, what did you just call it, Chad? You had the better word for it. Grading? Um, yeah, grading tools. And there's also some killer training on it uh, from like Stu Mashowitz and stuff like that on their channel. Uh, so I've, I've learned quite a lot about not a, not a ton, but enough to be dangerous with that tool, with some of Stu's tutorials. And and if you're a Max on One customer, you just have all that stuff. So uh, give it a go. And Magic Bullet Looks, of course, that's all built in. And what's fun about Magic Bullet Looks is when you use something and it looks good, you can actually dive in and see exactly how they did it. Like they, it's not obscured like a LUT is. You could actually click through inside of Magic Bullet Looks and it'll show you like it uses this color and this much gradient, this much bloom, and you could actually see what they do. So that's a good way to learn as well. Um, I'll say one more thing about HDRIs. Chad, what do you got? Well, I was going to add that um, I'm not a huge fan of Magic Bullet Looks. I, fi I find their looks to be a bit heavy handed. Um, we have a set of LUTs that we put together a while back. Um, uh, girly grade LUTs that are actually really tasteful and nice. Um, also, uh, look into training for DaVinci Resolve. That's a, a professional grading tool that is, I believe, free. They have a free version, and it's fantastic. Uh, a lot of great, powerful stuff in there. Um, yeah, you got to be but, a little yeah. bit careful with the Magic Bullet look stuff because a lot of it was built for, like, raw footage, like raw camera footage. And if you've ever seen raw camera footage, it's like almost gray it's on un, it's uncorrected right it's like What's built log? to be the log yeah you're right i'm sorry it's built a lot of those presets are built for like un super uncorrected super flat things to like bring them into contrast and so you need a little bit of that heavy handing and if it, if your render already looks decent you're just looking for that juice 
the the magic bullet look stuff can be a little bit aggressive and these LUTs, the the uh, gorilla gray LUTs, um, Chad's talking about, they're built more for that subtlety and raising like the black point just enough. You know, like it, it's built for 3D. Really, is is the point of them. So yeah, I think a lot of the LUT, out. a lot of the LUT packages that I've seen in and looks as well, kind of like were. I think in the in the late thousands, there was like this like heavy handed vibe, Instagram vibe, that everybody was doing. And then forgive me if they've updated and they made it. Well, there might be new ones. I just don't know about them. But yeah, that that's not what ours do. Ours are, are more tasteful and a little bit more um, useful, I guess, where you're not like immediately distracted by the look of something. Um, but yeah, I, I think that grading just in general, like, oh, here's a actually here's a really good tip. So um, if you want to play, if you've never used a LUT before and you're using Redshift or you're using uh, Octane, they ship with LUTs built in that you can play around with and like see which ones, you know, they have like the AFGA LUTs, they have some like Canon LUTs, they've got some Fuji LUTs and just get in there and mess around with them and, and see which ones, just like familiarize yourself with, with how they work. I think that's, yeah, that's a cool thing that they it. do. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. I was going to say one more thing about uh, HRIs and, and then we, I think we could wrap it up. Um, if you are looking for that cozy vibe, uh, and and war you didn't say cozy. I added, I put cozy in, you know, in, in the language here. But if you're looking for that warm vibe, uh, a collection to go check out is called Road Trip. And it's uh, in everyone's Plus account. You could download it. It works great with HDRI link. You click through it. They're not great for background if you really want a sharp background just because of the way that they were created. But the light quality of the Road Trip ones were was literally created because I I found myself in beautiful spaces. You know, you, you ever walk into a hotel lobby and you're like, man, they really dialed in the feel of this vibe. You know, like you get the perfect lighting coming in. It's not too bright. Then they got like little lights in your in your field of vision that are just subtle enough. And then they got this one big statue with the up lighting on it. And if you ever found yourself in those moments, uh, I took an entire year essentially and captured during my trips around the the, the world essentially, um, and and mostly in the states, going to all these parks and everything. Whenever I found myself looking around and like, wow, the lighting's really cool here, I captured it and put it in that collection. And so, if you're looking for those types of vibes, go check out the um, uh, the road trip collection, and it's full of that stuff. Um, a beautiful hotel room that's lit up just right or um you know like i said professionally lit spaces that that are built for human scale uh, or just the right time like i would stop my car in the middle of the desert when the sun was setting and i'm like sorry uh i gotta capture this <laughs> so apologies to my wife um but go check those out they're they're really simple but some of those I still come back to day to day because a lot of them have that real, uh, I don't know, real vibe. Like obviously our studio stuff looks really great for studio and, and um, you know, product and stuff like that. But when you're trying to get that natural vibe, I would, I would uh, try some of those as well. Um, all right. Let's wrap this up. What do you say, Chad? Did we do it? Did I we think, do another I live think show? we're good. We're good. <laughs> Thumbs up. I need a bourbon, damn it. Let's wrap I'm it out of up. here, guys. Wrap it, up. wrap it up. Hey, everybody, thank you so much for joining us for another live show. Chad, thank you, as always. Uh, Rachel and Jake, thank you in the chat and the entire team for helping get this going, setting this up. We are busy, busy right now uh, getting ready for a big release. We're excited to get this stuff out to you guys. Hopefully in the next show, we'll be able to share a little bit more with you about what's coming out. Stay tuned. We will see you in another live show in maybe about a month or so. Uh, and until then, if you have any questions, please hit up our support. We have the best support in the business. I promise. Come, come test us, <laughs> come test us. Uh, <laughs> and if you have a question about anything, hit us up, um, on, uh, uh, Twitter, or of course our support is here to help as well. Thank you. New plus members for joining us today. Um, and, uh, thank you, uh, plus members that have been around a while joining us today, sharing your thoughts and helping each other out. I appreciate you guys. Happy Thursday. Happy weekend. Chad, have a good one, buddy. I will see you. You too. You too, buddy. I will see you in another live show or video or tutorial really soon.
Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye, y'all.